this uh, semester focuses on contemporary uh, Islamic thought and institutions. And there isn't uh, any more appropriate way to uh, engage in the discussions and the conversation about events and uh, developments in the Muslim world uh, than what is underway in Egypt uh, at present. Uh, this lecture was uh, set up in a short notice. Uh, we have a number of guests that were traveling in the United States and to some of our uh, community members. There was a request uh, for an invitation to have uh, our distinguished guests with us to discuss uh, the most recent developments on Egypt. I have been observing and writing about the development in Egypt uh, uh, just in uh, this past fall um, I wrote a piece uh, that uh, criticized the Obama administration's embracing a Sisi uh, upon his visit to the United Nations and his delivering of a lecture or a talk uh, at the UN General Assembly uh, I said that Obama embracing a Sisi and endorsing human rights violations uh, there was a set of meetings that uh, President Sisi was uh, previewed to, including meeting with Obama, meeting with Clinton, Henry Kissinger, and a whole other host of individuals. And for me, that was a way to rehabilitate uh, and basically shift the U.S. from critiquing human rights and embracing a real democratic process to essentially going to real polity, politics as usual. Uh, where uh, the most convenient person that would deliver uh, U.S. interest uh, would be embraced and as such we wait for the next cycle of instability to emerge. Uh, so our hope in this conversation is not only to focus on the most recent development, uh, but also to critique from my perspective here in the United States, to critique U.S. government uh, policies uh, as it relates to uh, the development in Egypt and the broader Arab and Muslim world. And I say this in context uh, that just last week the United States uh, archives have uh, un essentially admitted that the U.S. was involved or behind the overthrow of Mossadegh in 1954. Now for many of us who have been reading material and engaged in all kinds related to the Middle East, we didn't need to wait for the archives to be open because John Stockwell and Philip Agee, as well as others, have already been writing about. And the interesting part that both John Stockwell's writing and Philip Agee were actually not allowed to be distributed in this country for a long period of time. And here the issue of free speech and uh, freedom of expression uh, intersects uh, national policy and foreign policy. So the critique of U.S. foreign policy, in essence, is if we only focus on a narrowly tailored national interest that is distorted, uh, that the consequences are many, including some of the development that we see uh, occurring at the ground, both in Egypt today, in uh, Libya, and uh, definitely including Syria and Iraq uh, in the general discussions. Uh, our hope today is to uh, listen to our three speakers and hopefully uh, they will give us both an insight on the uh, most recent development and then uh, possibly uh, articulate at the later on which way is forward because the path forward to restoring democracy in Egypt, so the emphasis in here on what, is the ne what are the next steps uh, for Egypt and how for us to create a larger conversation. Uh, we have with us three guests, uh, two of them will be speaking in Arabic and uh, if you allow me, I'll be translating uh, simultaneously uh, for both speakers and then we'll conclude with a speaker that will speak uh, in English. Uh, our first speaker for uh, today will be Dr. Muhammad Jamal Hishmat. Uh, he's the deputy of Egyptian parliament in exile and the parliament in exile is currently uh, is present in Turkey. Uh, still operating with the eye that they have a legitimate claim to uh, re-entering and coming back to direct the democratic process uh, in Egypt. So I'd like to invite Dr. Muhammad Jamal Hishmat to uh, the podium and I'll engage in translating uh, for his uh, presentation. 